All right, guys, today I want to talk about dealing with the side effects of taking steroids. Now, I'm talking about corticosteroids, steroids that you would take to reduce inflammation in your body. Now, people who would generally take this is people who have a lot of inflammation, chronic inflammation, and further than that, acute inflammation. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is you have inflammation um, over a long period of time, so chronic, and also acute, it might be a short-term flare-up of that. So it's actually more than you would have uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's sort of like <laughs> over a long period of time, but also it's happening in a short window now, like it's flaring up. Now you've got a lot of inflammation. You need to bring that down. Um, it can be used for both. Some people take it for short-term use and some people take it for long-term use. Um, and what are they? So it's a medication that simulates um, the release of cortisone. What is cortisone? Well, it's the stress hormone. If you've ever felt stressed, um, something's really scared you, something's really annoyed you, your body's probably released some cortisone, or cortisol, rather. And cortisone is just a fake version of that. And what we're doing is you're sort of stressing your body out because when you're stressed, your immune system's not so active. So that's what the drug's doing. So what side effects can you get? Well, a lot of people say they get moon face. So that's water retention. So you're holding more water in your face, in your joints. And that's why people call it moon face, because you look a bit rounder. So you're holding more water inside of you. Another thing is, well, you're stressed. So um, for me, I, I've taken this medication before. It's actually not being able to go to sleep because I was too stressed. And there's a number of other side effects like uh, increased appetite, all these other things. Um, the main ones that I experienced, which I can help you with today, is dealing with the diet, like while you've got the increased appetite, dealing with the stress, the lack of sleep, and to some extent the water retention. Um, because I got that very badly in my knees not so much my face. Um, yeah, I did look a bit rounder, but I guess for men, you know, if you have a beard, you can sort of hide it. Um, so <laughs> step one, I'd say for, if you've got a round face and you're a man with a beard, keep your beard and then that sort of hides it a little bit. The second thing is, I mean, for the water retention, you sort of just have to wait it out really until you come off the medication. Uh, just do what you can. For me, it absolutely wrecked my left knee in particular. Like I like to be able to squat like this. I like to sit in chairs like this. I like to squat down like this. And while I was on the medication, I couldn't. Like this really hurt. And I think because there was more water here, it was putting a lot of pressure on my knee. There's not much I could do about it really. So what I what did I do during this time? Well. I just try to move as much as possible. So I'd go for little walks. Um, I'd try and keep the joint active. I would try and squat down, even though it hurt. I'd do what I could. And I think that's the main thing is just do what you can, do what your body allows you to do. And just try and maintain a level of mobility while you're experiencing that sort of thing. Because you don't want to come out the end of it, say now you're lucky, you've come off the medication, you don't want to be sort of in a way worse position than you could have been. So what I mean is try and maintain a bit of activity. And then when you come off, you're not so unfit as if you were just lying there in bed. Because you want to avoid that. Um, I would suggest that for most things, actually. Just try and keep moving. No matter how bad you feel, no matter how ill you are, try and do whatever you can. Even if that's just sort of like getting up and out your chair. Maybe you can do this, you know, get your heart rate going a little bit. So like literally 
whatever your body allows you to do, do that. If you are very limited, just work within those constraints. Yeah, it is a bit depressing when you're like, oh, I wish I could, you know, walk properly again. I wish I could run. But right now, you can't. And you just got to accept that and do what you can. And if this is all you can do, then do that. <laughs> Make it work. You know, maybe try and have a bit of fun with it. But yeah, try and maintain some mobility and movement. And you'll thank me later when you come off the meds and you're not as unfit as you would have been. So diet. Well, the only thing I can say is try and eat healthy still while you're on these medications. Don't just stuff your face with processed foods. Don't just go and eat your chocolate or, you know, all the rubbish just because you're very hungry. Like, have something that you can snack on that you know isn't so bad. So for me, um, this won't be good for everyone, but I had peanut butter. I'd be like, oh, I'm starving. What do I eat? A spoonful of peanut butter. And <laughs> yeah, it's like very thick in that. Because um, I, I get the 100% peanut butter, so there's no other crap in there. And that would sort of bung my mouth up for a bit. And that would be good. Um, next thing is uh, some chewing gum. You know, the act of chewing will satiate you a little bit. I mean, it's not going to fill you up, but it can help in between. If you like, you don't want to eat and you feel hungry, maybe have a bit of chewing gum, drink some water. The next thing is... Yeah, look at what you're eating and make sure you're actually eating foods that are giving you nutrition. Because if you're eating crap, the reason why you're going to be hungry is because your body's like, I want some vitamins, I want some minerals, I want something good for me. Because that's sort of, um, you can get into like a vicious cycle if you're just eating like, you know, bread, carbs, so-and-so not only is your blood sugar going to keep spiking but your body's like we we want some vitamins so you know here's some hunger signals get us some food get us some protein and then it might just be that you're not eating the right foods but let's say you are eating the right foods um, and you're still hungry um, it's nothing wrong with eating a little bit more um, yeah you might gain a bit of weight but for now if you just want to eat a bit more food, um, it probably helps you on your recovery right now um, while you're in whatever disease state that you've got. Having that bit of extra food probably help you with your recovery. Try not to overdo it. Um, I was told from my specialist nurse um, a sign of like good recovery and inflammation levels coming down is weight gain. So say you've lost a lot of weight um, due to whatever disease you might have when you start gaining weight again like my nurse said it's a good sign that you are actually getting better and maybe you do actually need to regain some of that weight um, for me I had lost a lot of weight and I entered this state I don't know if it was starvation mode but it was like my body wanted to replenish what was lost so I very quickly gained my weight back but to be honest with you, I didn't go much over my original weight before I had lost weight. So I was about 78 to 80 kilos before I'd lost weight. I dropped down to about 70 kilos. Then when I had come out of hospital, so I was in hospital, I came out, I was on these steroids that I was tapering off and my weight came back and it sort of halted at about 78 kilos. So... I mean, monitor your weight, I would highly suggest. Um, try and have a record of your weights beforehand. If you don't, then, I don't know, try and have a ballpark figure. Or weigh yourself now, just so you know. And that's a really good measurement because it might be that you've just regained lost weight and your body's just being like, I want to get back to my set point, like the weight that we were at for a long time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I would suggest thinking about like once you're able to come off of the steroids, then come up with a plan for a more sustained, like if you want to lose weight, do that nice and slowly. If you want to gain some muscle in the gym or whatever, like you can work around that. But yeah, don't deprive yourself. But again, don't overfeed yourself on crap. 
like eat foods that you know you know are good for you i'm sure you know the foods you should be eating you know the foods that work for you we all sort of have an idea of what's healthy don't we so yeah is there any point in having that chocolate bar or whatever you might feel rubbish right now but it's not worth having those foods so we've talked about stress no we are well let's talk about stress so stress you're stressed you're on these steroids the faking it's the stress hormone so you're like i'm stressed well as in like going in with that mobility um, it's the same sort of advice have a walk try and go outside try and get in nature that does help um, do something to distract yourself because one you're on these medications Two, you probably feel shit because there's something wrong with you. You've got some sort of disease, you're in a bad state. You might feel a bit depressed about how you're feeling. I know I did. So have a game you can play or do something. Find something, like just talk to someone, like go on Discord or something or phone someone, you know, whatever, however you like to talk to your friends. Or if you haven't got anyone to talk to, join a support group like there's plenty of support groups for all sorts of diseases on discord i'm sure you can find a group start talking to people and actually i think what does help is just have a little bit of a complaint um the discord server i'm in they've literally got a channel called rant and rage so you just go in there and you complain and it's like you don't have to feel bad for complaining because that's what the channel's for and you might get some helpful responses or you might have just been allowed to let something go so talking moving those are the things that will really help and that moves into sleep so that's one of the best ways you can reduce your stress is sleep now this is sort of a cause of stress for me because the steroids wrecked my sleep and the only way i got sleep was through medications now you know having been through it myself if you are having shit sleep, phone the doctor and get some sleeping pills. Or go to the pharmacy and get some sleep aid. Because I tell you what, if I didn't have that, I think I would have lost my mind. Because I was getting way less, you know, I was under five hours of sleep. Like five hours of sleep was a good night for me during my time on the steroids. So get some sleep aid because I think, you know, a lot of nights I wouldn't have any sleep or I'd like nod off, like maybe get an hour and I'd wake up and I'd be wired and uh, I'd be like, I did not get enough sleep. Like that's stressing me out. Um, and the only way I got through it was with sleep aid. And yeah, just treat it as a temporary thing. But if you've got to use it to get some sleep, it's better to have that sleep than to not have that sleep because sleep is such an important part of the recovery and the way I treated it was, I'm going to take these now and deal with it later. And what I did was I came up with a plan to come off of the medications afterwards. And um, yeah, it did sort of, um, I was sort of reliant on it for a, a good period of time. But having been through that, having used the medications and come off of them, I feel better for it. You know, I'm glad I took it because... It stopped me like losing my mind from lack of sleep because I really was, you know, I I would have like sort of like emotional breakdowns and stuff. I was, I was very unstable during this time. Um, like I said before, like talking to people, I talked to a therapist during that time. I talked to my friends, um, just sort of uh, tried to get through it. But a lot of it comes down to you need to try and look after yourself. And while you're in this state of panic, you do need a sort of plan. So I would, if you feel like you're going to go through this sort of thing or you're going through it now, try and set some time aside to come up with your plan of action and stick to that plan. So then when you're in that sort of crisis mode where you're like, I'm freaking out, I don't know what to do, you don't need to think, you just refer to your plan because that's what I did. I was like, I'm going to take these pills and once I got through it, I came up with my plan, I'm going to slowly taper off I'm going to cut bits off the pill and come off of it over time. And that alleviated a lot of that stress. Like I didn't have to think about it anymore. I just knew what I was doing. My sleep sort of came back over time. 
and here we are today. I'm not on the steroids. My sleep's good. Um, it's the best it's probably ever been in my life now, having been through that. It made me a morning person, that. <laughs> but yeah, that was my biggest challenge whilst I was on the steroids, which was sleep. Um, sort of, not many people are going to be concerned about this as much as I was, but one of the side effects of the steroids is potential muscle wastage. So it's nothing like anabolic steroids. Um, it's not going to help you build muscle. It's doing everything to work against you. And it's going to, you know, make you lose muscle. So I fought hard to keep the muscle that I had. So while when I started getting my five hours of sleep again, I started weightlifting. And yes, I was tired. But the, the steroids, give they gave me like this fake energy in the morning because it was like I'd take the pills first thing in the morning, you know, here's your stress hormone. So I was like, my eyes were open. And I was like, I'm just going to go out and lift. And I used my morning like burst of energy to go outside and get some like good work in, lifting some weights, not incredibly heavy. I would just do like one set, do what I can, but I was just like, I am not losing muscle while I'm on this steroid. I must do some training. So it's good to have some some drive. Like that was part of my plan. My plan is like, again, going back to doing what you can. It's not like I could go to the gym for two hours. That was out of the question. Um, what it was was just small workouts with some weights, one set. And that's what I could do at that time. And that was fine with me because I knew I was at least I was trying something. And um, fatigue is a major part of it because you might be sleep deprived for such a long period of time. Like, for instance, I went on holiday to Centre Parks while I was still on the steroids. And I I was had this a huge backlog of fatigue with, um, I don't know, months of bad sleep. We'd... Um, so I'd wake up, I, this was when I was on holiday, I'd wake up, I'd have my healthy breakfast because I was like, I can't eat, well, I, I like to eat healthy anyway. But during that time I was having, um, I was having brown bread, avocado, a bit of Marmite, I just like Marmite on each slice and I'd have two eggs on each, poached eggs, very easy. Um, again, that's part of my plan, make the simplest breakfast and I found poaching eggs way easier than anything else because you just crack an egg in a pan of water and you just wait a little bit. You fish it out, put it on your toast. I had that. I had some energy in the morning. But then come like midday, I would crash. And I'm not one for napping. Like I have never been a nap person. But during this time, I actually just had to go to bed and fall asleep for an hour. And that's just what I had to do. And every day I'd sort of like get to about 11 o'clock and I'd just be like, and I'd feel like, you know, I, I felt I was, the way I described it, it's like I was, I'm dying. Like I didn't feel like I was dying as such, but I was just like, I'm suddenly like this wash of fatigue would come over me. And I'd be like, I can't, do, I can't function. Like my brain would stop working. And then I'd be like, I've just got to go to bed. So I went, I'd lied on the bed, put something over my eyes. And I actually just fell asleep. And like I said, I'm not one for napping, but I did nap during that time. So like I said, it's managing your energy levels and just allowing for, like you do need to rest. You're probably very fatigued. You have to allot that. And say you've got to go to work. I'd say you have to bring this up with your manager because how are you going to get through this period? Like, say you're in an office or whatever. I think you're going to have to ask for a reasonable adjustment in that case. I mean, it would be nice if you could get some time off to help recover. But say you have to go to work. Um, would you, you, I just hope you've got an understanding manager. Because I would explain, you know, what is going on with you. If you are having this major fatigue... I would share that with your manager and just say, I'm doing what I can, but I might have to have some time, like an hour to maybe has, like sleep if you need to, or 
And now I just to close your eyes in a quiet space because you've been chronically sleep deprived. Um, yeah, I imagine that'd be very tough. And if you haven't got an understanding manager, I mean, that would be terrible. Um, my first thought would be like, it'd be best to find a different job if you, they can't understand what you're going through and that you're still there trying to get work done but you just need that reasonable adjustment to allow you that time to have a bit of rest, which I think is very reasonable for the state you're in. But like, I don't want to say, because you might need whatever job you're in, um, you might need that money to get through whatever you're doing. But, you know, if there is an option, if you do have a manager that is an arsehole or just won't give you that reasonable adjustment, um, I would say start looking for another job. Like find a job where they value you and we'll look after you but let's say uh, hopefully you do have a reasonable manager just like say explain what's going on maybe make some sort of like work around like you will try and get some work done um, in whatever sort of time frame like you do a little bit extra later or like to make up for lost time or whatever you can manage I'm sure if you're like you truly mean what you say and you know I'm sure it will go okay. At least bring it up. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, you might, since you've got a suppressed immune system, you do have to be careful around people who are sick. So, I mean, for me, I was, I mean, this was like closer to COVID time, so I was wearing a mask. Um, yeah, just be mindful of people around you. I sort of become hyper aware of the people around me. You hear a sneeze, you hear a cough. You're like looking around like, who's that? I must keep my distance from him. Don't sort of over freak out about it. I've been on immunosuppressants for quite a long time now. And I think I overreacted. Um, but yeah, just be mindful of that. While you're on these steroids, it is suppressing your immune system. That's the whole point. Because for whatever condition you've got, it's suppressing it so you can recover and reduce your inflammation levels. But yeah, I hope some of this advice helps you. Um, yeah, and I hope the experiences I've shared can help you make some better decisions. If you've got any questions or you want to talk to me about it, leave me a comment or join my Discord, which is in the uh, in the description, and you can send me a message. If you don't want to share it here publicly, I'd be happy to share whatever I know about about this with you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.